Dear student, Assalamu alaikum. Environment is a treasure of all types of resources. Man obtains from environment his life support systems and the basic components like water, air and soil. And little disturbance in any component have hazardous effects on our environment. So scientists and researchers are keep finding new ways to solve this problem. One of the strategy to solve this problem is bioremediation. So let's see what is bioremediation. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about uh, what is bioremediation, applicability of bioremediation, different approaches of bioremediation, applications of bioremediation, benefits of bioremediation, some limitations of bioremediation, and also we will discuss the important factors which affect the successful bioremediation process. What is bioremediation? Bioremediation is the use of microorganisms and plants to reduce or eliminate toxic pollutants from contaminated sites by degradation, assimilation or by transformation into atmosphere. This process is also known as biorestoration or bio uh, treatment process and according to the Environmental Protection Agency, bioremediation is a treatment that uses naturally occurring organisms to break down hazardous substances into less toxic or non-toxic substances. Applicability of bioremediation. It can be considered for each of the environmental states of the matter like it can be used for solids, it can be used for liquids, it can be used for gases also. So in soil, uh, for solids, uh, it can be used uh, for soil, for sediments and for sludge treatment and uh, it can be used for liquid phases also like uh, for the wastewater treatment, for the groundwater and industrial wastewater treatment, municipal wastewater treatment also. It can be also used for the industrial emissions, for the soil and gas uh, remediation, etc. And the applicability, its success, uh, and its success depends upon uh, three important factors. One of the factors is the properties of pollutants, the second one is microbial community, and the third one is the environmental factors. So, what are the properties of pollutants? The properties of pollutants are the specific structures of the pollutants and if microbes don't have uh, abilities to degrade those pollutants like those metabolic activities are not present in the microbial cells uh, they cannot bioabsorb or bioabsorb the pollutants so it is very difficult and there will be no successful bioremediation. The second important factor is the microbial community. It is also important that there should be some specific microbial community which must have the ability to degrade or to bioabsorb or to uh, do some bioabsorption processes to treat those pollutants. And the third factor is the environmental conditions like temperature, soil, aerobic and anaerobic conditions are very essential and water activities also essential for the successful bioremediation process. There are different approaches for bioremediation process. Uh, one is the intrinsic bioremediation and the second one is the biostimulation, then bioaugmentation and party remediation processes. So what is intrinsic bioremediation process? Intrinsic, uh, in intrinsic bioremediation, we monitor the natural biodegradation process which occur on the original site of uh, pollutants. And then uh, second important uh, approach is the biostimulation process. It is the process that increases the activity of microbes to biodegrading the contaminants, for example, by addition of nutrients, by addition of oxygen, they stimulate the activity of the microbial cells to degrade the pollutants. Then the third strategy is the bioaugmentation strategy and uh, in this bioaugmentation we add some additional microbes or the indigenous microbe or the exogenous microbes are genetically modified microorganisms to that particular site to metabolize to metabolize those pollutants and to treat those pollutants. 
Another strategy is phytoremediation. In phytoremediation, we use different types of plants to, uh, to control the pollutants from the soil, like use of the pollutants, tolerant pollutants, uh, tolerant uh, uh, plants are grown on the specific uh, soil, uh, polluted soil, and then they are cultivated there, they are grown there, and then they are, uh, they are harvested and uh, disposed of in a safe way. So selecting the most uh, appropriate strategy to treat a specific site can be guided by different uh, by uh, by considering three basic principles like the amenability of the pollutants to biological transformation to less toxic pollutants is um, uh, very important and the second uh, one the basic principle is the accessibility of contaminants to microorganisms. Uh, when uh, microbes uh, uh, will be, microbes can easily degrade pollutant if they are easily accessible, if the contaminants are easily accessible to microorganism, if they are bound to some uh, particles or some chemicals. So it is very difficult for microbes to degrade those pollutants. And the opportunity for optimization of biological activity is very important for successful bioremediation. Here are some advantages of microbial bioremediation like uh, the first one is the minimal exposure of contaminant to the on-site worker is also essential because uh, mostly we do microbial bioremediation process in controlled conditions so there is less chance uh, for the exposure, uh, for the exposure uh, to the on-site workers and then long-term protection of public health is also assured by using control conditions and it is the cheapest of the most pollutants uh, treatment strategy compared to the conventional treatment strategies. It can be done on site with minimal space and equipment uh, because uh, we do mostly into the, uh, into the bioreactors. So uh, there is minimum space required for bioreactors. And then transforming pollutants instead of moving them from one site to another site and performance of degradation in an acceptable time uh, because uh, optimized conditions are used which uh, we already know that these conditions are best and in this particular time uh, uh, these pollutants can be degraded. There are different strategies of uh, bioremediation uh, for the treatment of waste materials in situ bioremediation and ex situ bioremediation. What is ex situ by remediation in in situ uh, what is in situ by remediation in in situ by remediation there is direct contact between microorganisms and pollutants for the biotransformation usually uh, in this approach in this strategy uh, the original uh, at original site pollutants are degraded there are different benefits of this strategy like minimal site disruption simultaneous treatment of waste minimum exposure of public and low cost of in situ by remediation compared to the conventional treatment strategies. There are some limitations also of this in situ by remediation. It is time consuming uh, because uh, sometimes you don't know about uh, how much time it will take uh, and seasonal variation of microbial activity due to environmental conditions also affect the successful microbial degradation process. Like sometimes there will be rain, sometimes there will be high temperature conditions. And the third one is the problematic application of treatment additives like nutrients and oxygen also. When you add some nutrients or oxygen, so the excessive growth of microbes or other microbes occur which cause another problems. Another uh, approach is ex situ by remediation. These techniques involve the removal of waste material and their collection at a place to facilitate microbial degradation of pollutants. In this technique, what uh, we do usually, we remove the uh, waste material from the original site, uh, we collect them and then we treat at, uh, then we treat these pollutants at a particular site or inside the lab or at some particular site in the bioreactors. There is classification of ex situ bioremediation in two phases, solid phase system and then another system is slurry based system. 
Solid waste system include land treatment and soil piles for composting processes and uh, slurry phase system include treatment of solid liquid suspensions in bioreactors. What is land farming? It is a technique in which contaminated soil is removed from the original site and they are spread over a prepared bed and they are periodically tilled until the pollutants are degraded. Another uh, strategy is composting uh, usually used for the solid waste and the decomposition of organic matter uh, by a mixture of microbial population uh, into in a moist warm environment and in this strategy in composting strategy usually some solid waste like fruit waste, vegetable waste is converted by microbial cells into a, a usable material which is called compost and this compost we use as a biofertilizer also. Uh, bioreactors are used for the slurry uh, system in the slurry system and these reactors are also called slurry reactors or aqueous reactors and they are used for the treatment of contaminated soil and water pump from the contaminated sites. Here are some essential factors which are required for the microbial biodegradation processes. One of the factor is the microbial population. So suitable kinds of organisms that can biodegrade all kind of contaminants is essential. So uh, because if microbes don't have that ability, so it is very difficult for microorganisms to degrade or bioabsorb or uh, bio absorb the pollutants from the uh, wastewater etc and another factor is oxygen so enough oxygen is required to support the aerobic biodegradation and anaerobic degradation processes depends on the microbial activities and another factor is water soil moisture should be from 50 to 70 percent and this uh, water is very important because without uh, proper water uh, amount uh, bacteria and microbes cannot easily do their microbial activities. Another factor is nutrients. So nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and other nutrients are also required to support good microbial growth. Temperature is also very important. Appropriate temperature for microbial growth is from 0 to uh, 40 C and it depends on the microbes that which uh, temperature they allow to grow. And pH is also very essential for successful microbial growth and for successful bioremediation processes. Best range is from 6.5 to 7.5. These all are essential environmental factors which are required for the successful uh, microbial bioremediation processes. And without these factors, it is difficult for microbial cells to grow and hence they cannot successfully degrade uh, different types of pollutants. 